I'm gonna show you this. See how there's like a trench in the floor? I think this is actually how it got the name Lava Brook. I don't think my flashlights, man. Wish I had a better camera. I have the flashlight's pretty bright. It's just the camera's not for low light. It's just a GoPro, it's got a tiny sensor. Unfortunately, I can't afford a Nikon Z9. Maybe someday I'll buy one, but yeah, one thing at a time. Nikon Z9 is like $5,500 body only. Then a decent lens would be another 500 bucks. Then a decent gimbal would be another 500 bucks. So we're talking about like $7,000 to try to be able to shoot videos like this. And the thing is with a big sensor, well, it's a long story. There are disadvantages. Ah, dang it. This is so slippery, it's hard to get up here. Okay, there we go. Nothing up there, nothing up there, nothing up there. All right, so I'll go in here. Uh, I love this part. It's so cool. I already pointed this out earlier in the, the other video. Look at this, how at the bottom half of the cave is really smooth, the top half of the cave is really rough. So I think that means it flowed twice. It flowed once, cooled fast, and it was really rough. And then it flowed again with a lower level, but it cooled slower, came out smooth. I think that's how it happened. Of course I wasn't there. But, oh man, my gimbal's pointing the wrong way again. Come on. There we go. I might have switched flashlights. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to pause the video to switch flashlights. Well, now I guess this is good enough for now. I only have four flashlights with me. So, okay, so there's a little dead end. There's a way to get to slide back down. That's going to be really fun, I swear. Here's a little hole. Let's see if I can... Hold on a second. Yeah, that's a dead end. I tried showing my flashlight underneath. I didn't see any light coming through. Wow, that is so cool. Alrighty then. So, this cave, it's, it's got easy parts and hard parts. So, look at this. I can go up here now too. So I keep going up a little, up a little. You'd think I'd be almost to the surface. But you gotta realize the surface, the ground, it slopes too. So, it's not like I'm going to catch up to it. Almost to the end, but I still want to see how close I can get. What's funny? Oops. So look under there. There's obviously the cave keeps going. I can't fit through there. I'm too big, so I'm gonna skip that. But it is interesting. Maybe if I ever lose weight, and get really skinny, I can come back try again. But we'll see. Right now. I don't know. I should bring a ruler. You know what I need to do, seriously, is measure how, how thick am I from front to back? And then measure, so I can actually measure the cave and be like, yep, I'll fit through there. There's a red dot marking something. Darn if I know what. Notice, oh, I forgot to show this in the video. Hang on. So look at this. Look at how the floor is smooth and then rough. Smooth and then rough. So this is your first clue. There were two flows. The older flow cooled faster so it's rougher. 
and then the newer flow, it cooled slow, or, so it came out smoother. Of course, both are getting down from wear and tear of people crawling through, but there's still obviously a difference. Oops, darn it. So there's nothing over here, obviously. Looks like that's the dead end. I'll go ahead and get closer just to make sure. As long as I'm here, I might as well make it official. I don't want to leave too many mysteries. Have the urge to come back. Wow. Looks like it gets pretty small back there. I'm going to see if I can go a little farther. Since the floor is not too rough, I think I can do this. Oh yeah, yeah, see? That's obviously dead end. Nobody's gonna fit back there. I need to make a little robot, little droid, climb back there and look around. Let's see something cool, watch the movie Prometheus. They like these two small drones. They find a big cave and they have the drones fly through with LiDAR and map out the cave. That's a really cool idea. They had me this late LiDAR to map out some of these caves, like Valentine Cave, but uh, it was stationary, like on a tripod. So you scan it from one place, you scan it from another place, get all these different point clouds, you put it together, get a pretty big, pretty good point cloud of the cave. Then you can have an algorithm connect the dots. The only thing is LiDAR, they only use one color laser, so the results are black and white. Obviously, if you used a red laser, a green laser, and a blue laser, you could get the color, but they don't do that yet. I think they just use red for safety reasons. Green and blue are much more dangerous. You don't want to zap a bat or a person. But yeah, it sounds like a fun idea. Hopefully, they'll have something like that in my lifetime. Full color LiDAR. They'll probably invent it for uh, driverless cars if it's possible to do safely. Of course, LiDAR. I think right now they use infrared, so it's not distracting. Having a bunch of cars driving around shooting laser beams at people. I think the other drivers would find that a bit distracting. In case you're wondering, I'm going feet first, because it's a little bit steep. I don't want to fall head first down this cliff. I've done some 3 meet, three model you know, caves using photography. They call it photogrammetry. It works reasonably well, but you need to start with good pictures. So you need to use either a flash or a tripod. So it, it takes a long time. Like I can crawl through this cave in a couple hours. To do a 3D model of this cave, it would take me days. It's not really worth the effort. Wish they would just make a camera with a really, really high speed flash so I could just take, you know, basically walk through like this, but keep getting, you know, 10 flash pictures per second or something. What if that'd be bad for your eyes? Okay, anyway.